we're, we're going to spend the next sort of 20 minutes or so just talking to you guys about um, School of Physical Sciences. I'm Andrew McKinnon. I'm um, an actual physicist, so don't hold that against me. Um, unless you love physics and then you'll embrace the whole idea. Uh, good thing is I won't be talking for the, the full 20 minutes. I've got uh, sh three students from the um, School of Physical Sciences who are at various stages of their journey here at um, University of Adelaide who will be talking to you about their experiences. Okay, and that's part of what we're going to sort of talk to. I'll talk a little bit about the more boring things and then they're going to come in and hopefully inspire you all of why physics chemistry or earth sciences are a really good pathway to choose. Okay, a few things there. University, why University of Adelaide? Well, we're the leading university. We're ranked in the top 1% worldwide. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about some of those details and um, these guys will as well. So, physical sciences, that incorporates physics, chemistry and earth sciences, which is a geology, geophysics type of area. Um, as I said, we're going to hear for three students. Um, they all have very unique journeys, and I think that's, that's the important thing. Your, your, your education is actually a journey. Um, and one thing is it's, one, it's a journey that should be challenging, should be rewarding, um, and also it's a journey that has to lead somewhere. And that's one of the really powerful things about science is it does lead somewhere, it does open doorways. Now, when you sort of consider what is in physical sciences, there's a lot of different variants and sometimes people can get confused about this, all the different degrees, the name degrees. I'm not going to go into the huge detail behind these. We've got set up in the tent next door. Um, we've got people there who will be able to spend some time sitting down explaining some of the nuances. The main thing I just want to point out is the things the Bachelor of Science or the Bachelor of Science Advance, when you do those you end up doing a major. So the main thing we're going to be talking about is the people who lead on and end up with a major in chemistry or geology, geophysics or theoretical physics or experimental physics. Okay, then we've got the advanced degree. You also end up with a major. The only difference is the advanced degree has a research component attached to it. They are very similar programs, but it just has that research component in the first, the second and the third year. So you actually can spend time with some of the researchers potentially doing some research yourself, which is a great opportunity. Then we have the name degrees. The ones I have up there are the energy geoscience, the mineral geoscience. They're from the geology area. So they end up, they're very similar to a normal Bachelor of Science with a, a major, for instance, in that, in, in um, geology or geophysics. But some of the courses which they encourage you to do and you need to do lead into that slightly more focused area. And then we have the physics ones, space science and astrophysics, high performance computational physics, which is actually an honours degree. It's a three year and honours is already embedded in it. Normal degrees, you'll do a three year degree and then honours after. And laser physics and technology. And again, they're very similar to a Bachelor of Science with a major in physics, but the courses or the subjects, what you guys would call subjects, we call courses, have got a focus in those areas, but they still end up being effectively a Bachelor of Science with a major in one of the discipline areas. Okay, why study physical sciences? A lot of reasons. You love it. Okay, you like asking questions and finding out solutions. I mean, that's one reason why I really love doing science. Studying something new. This is a great opportunity to try something new, and a Bachelor of Science, especially in the physical sciences, you've got a broad range of things you could actually pick. You want to be a scientist or not? And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that because it's the skills you get doing science and in the physical sciences can transfer in so many different areas. You want a job? Okay, everyone wants a job, hopefully. If not, this is probably not the pathway for you. Um, if you're not exactly sure what you want to do, and this is a really common one, you're not sure what you want to do, and you'll find there's a lot of people who get quite far into their degree and aren't yet sure what they want to do, but where these degrees are fantastic, is they let you delay that decision. So if you're still procrastinating, or you may know what you want to do, basically this is a great opportunity. Now, some of you may have gone to the talk that Sandy gave this morning, which was about the, the uh, broad science degrees. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about this, but the main thing I want to pick up, this was actually, it was a survey which was done uh, in 2015, it was the uh, Office of the Chief Scientist. Top three things, active learning. This is what basically skills that employees want. 
Active learning, critical thinking, complex problem solving, creative problem solving. That's in a scientific area, not like creative accounting, okay? It's in science, creative problem solving. And it's only when you sort of get quite far down, you start getting the, the, the discipline specific skills. So this is the, the critical thinking skills, the, the ability to solve problems. It's the skills you get doing science. That's what employees want. They do sometimes want those discipline-specific skills, which gives you this fantastic opportunity to study something you really enjoy doing and then get the skills that will get you a job. It's a fantastic combination of the two. Job mobility. This is something which is very different to, to people of my generation or older, where nowadays people are turning over jobs. People are changing career paths. You'll actually find what you think you want to do or what you start out doing you'll probably find 5, 10, 15 years later, you're doing something very different. And so that's where at university, it's not the, skill sp it's not the job specific training you get that counts, it's the skills that you actually get, the skills that can be transferred into a lot of different areas. So it is something where it's very unlikely, unlike your parents where they may have had the same job for a very long time, it's very unlikely that people will actually have that in the future. And also we don't know what some of the jobs will be in the future. Okay, so this, this is a, it's a little, it's a one or two years old, this information here, so just bear with this for a sec. Physical science graduates, okay, what do they earn? Well, the starting salary for a, a science graduate in 2015 was about 60,000. That's not too bad. That's not bad. As you come up, it's on par with what you get for medicine when you first come out. 47% of people go on to do further full-time study. Now that's because not because they can't get jobs, it's because they enjoy doing a little bit of extra study. They enjoy the research. And the benefit of that is their starting salary is over 80 grand, okay? By 2019, the level of employment of physical sciences is predicted to grow by 11%. That's actually gone up. That's now up 14%. So there's this demand for people who have got the physical sciences skills to actually get jobs. We realise there's a huge focus on the government in STEM related areas and that's where you get the physical sciences are at the core of those areas. And 22% of physical science graduates are employed before they graduate. We get people who haven't even finished their degree and already have a job lined up, which is higher than what it typically is for most university broad graduates. Okay, that's enough of me talking. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to hand the floor over to three of our students. They're in their summer at the beginning, the middle and the end of their PhDs and they're going to talk about their journey. So first off, I'd like to ask Jason if you'd like to come up and talk to us about your journey. Step one, figure out the microphone. Is that all right? Yeah. Everyone can hear? All right. Hi, everyone. My name's Jason Oliver. And, oh, where's the, first place? Okay. And today I am speaking you, to you with a goal in mind, right? And the goal that I have in mind is to share with all of you my experiences over the last five to six years, right? So, in keeping with that goal, something I'm not going to be doing is going into huge specifics about what I've studied, right? You'll have loads of people who can do that. I'm gonna try and keep it simple, and I'm gonna try and just be uh, uh, general, right? So with this in mind, I need to talk about where I'm from, where I moved to, what I studied uh, and what I plan to do, right? So unlike a lot of people here, I imagine, I'm from a rural town, Wyala. You've probably all heard of it. Uh, it's well known for its manufacturing of steel and mining and these sorts of related industries. Uh, this is a picture from the jetty in Wyala, uh, which is probably one of the nicest pictures from this, uh, the town. <laughs> the rest is red, that's the secret. Uh, and five years ago, I moved from Wyala to Adelaide, which as you can see is quite different. Um, now, the reason I moved from Wyala to Adelaide 
is university. Right. In year 12, I was a bit unsure what I wanted to study. Uh, I knew that I was interested in physics, uh, and I knew that I, like, science was uh, sort of where I wanted to go. But I think, like lots of science students, I was sort of tempted by the dark side. And in this case, the dark side is engineering, right? And, the, uh, and one steal there, uh, when they offer to uh, pay for like, tuition and things like that, it can be a very tempting sort of offer. But I sort of thought about it, did my year 12. It's a very difficult time. And then I sort of centered around doing a degree in uh, physics. So the degree I did was a Bachelor of Science Advanced, which is a very like, research-oriented degree. So moving on, I've sort of summarized my undergrad into some highlights. Uh, so wh when I look back on my undergrad, the things that I think about are making lots of friends in like, my first and second years. I uh, was founding the Science Society of the University, which is called OSCA. There's like 400 people in it. Uh, and going on exchange to Copenhagen in Denmark. Uh, and a little bit more about that is when you go on exchange, you go away from six months to a year uh, to probably like, this, oh, I, I, off the top of my head, I actually don't know how many places that you can go on exchange to, but it's, it's a lot. So if you can think of the country, you can, you can likely something get something arranged um, and it's that experience in particular that really affected the rest of my degree right it really changes the way that you look at things and you become a very sort of uh, internationally minded uh, individual um, in particular I really liked my third year of coursework right you don't often have people say yeah I really like study right but my third year was like really something like the courses that I did were uh, all very uh, well designed, and they all sort of uh, coalesced around uh, specific ideas uh, in physics. Um, and in particular, I also had uh, exposure to research culture, which is uh, sort of summer research scholarships, uh, exposure directly with professors and things like that. And after all, I think, I think that's really what we want. We want to do a degree, but then also have exposure to what it's sort of really going to be like, because there can be a disconnect between a degree and the actual job that you're going to do. So the, because I had academia in mind, uh, this sort of let me sleep well at night. So when I thought research culture, I thought lots of people don't really, when, you, when you're just coming into university, that doesn't really mean much, right? Because it's, it's, you don't have uh, experience surrounding what academics do every day, right? So I thought a good way to sort of explain what research culture is uh, is, sorry, yeah, that's me. Yeah. A good way to explain what research culture is is by just telling you what I did in my honours. Um, so I chose a project in an area of my choice. Uh, for what I did was sort of like a mixture between theoretical physics and experimental physics. Um, I also did coursework, so I did seven courses along the side. Um, and along the way, I learned a lot of different skills, like particularly like programming, which is really transferable, uh, looking up, uh, being able to read uh, articles and things like that. And at the end, I wrote like a 50-page thesis that, I, that was all like mine and what I really understood. And it was titled uh, Chargino Polarization in the MSSM, which is like a really specific thing. And if your eyes glaze over, that's good because these things are supposed to be specific. Right? You're not supposed to be able to understand it day one. Um, so what I'm doing now ooh, is working on the Atlas experiment. So I've started my PhD. Um, have, have, how many of you have heard of the Atlas experiment? Just chuck your hands up. Yeah. OK, so the Atlas experiment is a cathedral-sized detector uh, that's located about 100 meters below uh, Geneva. Um, uh, around the Large Hadron Collider. And for some like, context, uh, that's an uh, EU citizen. So right down at the bottom. So it's a huge detector, and it's awesome. <laughs> and the Large Hadron Collider is this big. So it's 27 kilometers long. Uh, thousands of people work on it, and it's really like cutting edge research. Um, so if you're interested in a PhD, some of the things that are really good about it, self, it's self-directed. Uh, you get direct exposure to research, culture, and academics. Uh, you can be a part of an, an international collaboration. And 
I think the next one's really something I like. It's, there's lots of travel. So in a month's time, I'm actually traveling to Geneva to work for eight weeks. Um, and I'm really excited for that. And you also get coffee machines, which is awesome. Um, and I did have something to say there, but I think I'll probably leave it there. But just to say that uh, a lot of the time, you don't know what you want to do, uh, and that's okay. Uh, you sort of, I think if you invest in skills and in yourself, then those skills and that investment in yourself can pay off in many other jobs and things like that. Um, so I'll just leave it at that because true to my nature, I spoke too long. <laughs> I've actually just finished my PhD in metamorphic geology here at Adelaide, which is quite a nice feeling because it's always a bit of a long journey to get there. But um, sometimes I'm really surprised that this is where I've ended up and what I've ended up doing because when I was at school I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do. My career choices varied almost on a weekly basis from things like architecture to meteorology to diplomacy, which I thought sounded very glamorous. And eventually, by the end of year 12, I still had no idea. So I knew I wanted to go to uni, and I enrolled in a combined law science degree with a diploma of language in Spanish, just to cover as many bases as I possibly could. Um, I didn't even really know what I wanted to do as my science major. And when I got to uni, I started doing geology in first year, and I really enjoyed it and kind of just kept on doing it. Throughout my undergrad degree, I did work experience for a mining company, I did work experience for Santos, I did a law clerkship, and I spent two months living in Spain, learning the language. But somehow throughout all of that, I just kept on doing geology. So I thought I'd share some of the reasons why I started and why I kept on going. Geology is really broad-based, and it gives you an opportunity to study lots of different things. So when I was at school, I liked geography and I liked chemistry. And I get to use both of those things a little bit in my day-to-day -day work in geology, and also a little bit of physics and a little bit of creativity. So my role is to get what evidence I can and then to try and make the most logical, most simple story I can from the evidence I've got to try and understand specific processes in the Earth. Um, I've always been interested in how the world works, and I think lots of people probably fundamentally are. Because you look at the Earth and you see these patterns that need explanation. So, for example, why are some places really safe to live and other places not? Or why do some places have mineral resources and why do others not have them? How do we find them? How do we make the most of them? And even just if you're a tourist, looking at the world and saying, why does the landscape look like it does? Why is Mount Everest the highest mountain in the world? Or why is there a great big rock in the middle of central Australia? And all of these things are things that geology helps us to answer and to understand. So that's what I really liked about it. It's also a good way of making friends. So when I walked into my first year math class on day one of uni, I knew absolutely nobody. And I was a little bit concerned that I would be a bit lonely. But um, science in general is a great way to meet people because we have practice sessions, we work in groups, and we spend quite a lot of time with contact hours at uni, getting to know people. Geology as well is, has got quite a strong social scene. Um, so we've got a university geological society who have barbecues, and they also run pub crawls with varying degrees of geology puns on the shirts. So that's always a bit of fun. But because geology's got such a strong field component as well, that was another way of meeting people and getting to know them. And I think... Lots of students have never done things like field trips before, so at first perhaps it's a little bit out of their comfort zone, but by the end, almost all of them find it a really rewarding experience, and the friends they make on those trips are friends that they keep for a long time. So that was a cool part of geology as an undergrad. I also really like travel, like lots of geologists, I think. And so I've got to visit some amazing places that I probably never would have been to otherwise. So 
Even as an undergrad, we visit Central Australia and the Flinders Ranges. And then when we get to honours, there's a trip to New Zealand, which lots of the students really love. Um, but when I started my PhD, that's when I got to visit the really cool, interesting places. So I spent two months in Antarctica doing field work, which was obviously a fairly unique experience and one of the highlights of my PhD. I've also visited parts of India that I never would have gone to as a tourist. And last year, I ticked off my seventh continent when I went to a conference in Namibia. So it's kind of good because it's partially paid for, so it's subsidized travel. But it also means that I see the world and I visit places that I wouldn't see as a tourist and I see it differently because I'm there to understand how it works. Uh, the recurring theme of my life is pretty much indecision. So the good thing about geology was it left so many doors open and I didn't have to decide right away what it was I wanted to do. So obviously you can work for a mining company or a petroleum company, but really you can also become an exploration geologist and spend time in the field. You can go into teaching, you can work for the government, you can even go into policy and things like that, or financial analysis for big finance companies. All of these things are options that, the doors are open to you when you, when you do geology. So I really like that and that's sort of why I kept on going. But kind of last, and it sounds a bit lame, the reason I really stuck at it is that geology becomes a lifestyle. It's not just a desk job. So I love being outside, I love traveling, I love going to new places and, and doing things that are a bit different. And so I get to do that as a job. Um, it's, really, it's really a kind of unique job, I think, in that sense. And for me, I've just finished, so what's next for me is that I'm starting a three-year postdoc with the Geological Survey and the university. Um, next week I'm going out to do helicopter field work in Western Australia. And although I never really expected to end up here, I think what happened was I just took advantage of all the opportunities I had and kept an open mind. And I think that's probably what's really important about your trip at university is just to see where you go and do the best you can while you're doing it. And now. Hello. <clears throat> Hello. How's it going? Um, so my name's Nobby, so I'll just be wrapping up the student talks. Um, so I am a chemist by trade. I'm doing my PhD in chemistry. And I just want to talk a little bit about what I actually do on a database basis and a little bit about what my research is about. So I work in the field of hydrogels, which is a kind of material that's made about 95% of water. And so if you've been to the emergency room before with like a cut or a burn or something, they might put these hydrogels on you. Um, to kind of accelerate the healing process. But it's also used in things like tissue engineering and drug delivery. Um, I don't really want to focus too much on the chemistry per se, but I do want to kind of mention what this really means as a researcher. So I brought with you one of the hydrogels that I made today. So I've got this orange uh, gel in a vial here. And what this represents is actually one of the rarest and most unique compounds in the world. And I know that because I made this one. This is the only one in existence in the entire universe, as far as anyone in this known Earth actually realizes. And that's kind of the essence of what a PhD is. It's discovering new knowledge, it's uncovering new facts, and kind of seeing the world before anyone else does. If I sort of thought to myself, you know, 10 years ago, when I was sitting in a position similar to yours, I probably didn't think to myself that I would be doing this kind of research, kind of looking at things that no one else had known before. And so 2006, that's when I was in year 12. I got my 10-year school reunion coming up, which is quite scary. Um, like many people in year 12, 17, 18-year-olds, uh, I had a bit of a teenage crisis. I didn't really know what I wanted to do in life, and I kind of felt like this frog here just kind of hanging on the ledge, not knowing where I wanted to go. Yes, I liked chemistry and science, but I liked maths, I liked drama, I liked singing, and I liked painting and all this other stuff. Um, and I was kind of confused as to what I wanted to do. There was so much pressure um, when I was in high school to kind of pick a direction. And I felt that everyone around me knew what they wanted to do, and I was the only one that was sort of struggling. I wish someone had told me that this was the reality of the situation, that nobody knows what they're doing. We're all scrambling to kind of figure out what degree we want to do. Do we even want to go to uni? Do we want to take a gap year or whatever? And 
yeah, that was a difficult time, as I'm sure many of you can um, recognise. So, after year 12, I decided that, you know, going to uni wasn't really a good idea for me. I was too confused, and I just needed a bit of a break after studying for 12 years. So, I took a gap year. I um, deferred university, I worked for the first half of the year, and then I saved all my money and went to USA, working in one of their summer camps. It was a great decision for me. A phenomenal experience to meet all these people from all these different countries around the world, from the Netherlands, from America, obviously, from different parts of Asia, Asia from the Middle East, and kind of open my eyes up into what the world is, and also the kind of person that I wanted to be when I you know, left and kind of went on with my life. Not necessarily the job I wanted to do, but what I wanted to contribute to the world. And I think after that gap year, I was in a better position to make decisions about my life, and so I enrolled back into uni. And I enrolled in a double degree in both maths and chemistry. And I enjoyed both those things and kind of just wanted to see how it went. However, after the first year, I decided to drop maths. This was me kind of in a nutshell. In primary school, what's one plus one? Two. Awesome. I am amazing at maths. In high school, you know, it's still a little bit difficult. They started introducing algebra and things like that. It's still a challenge, but it was something that I felt that, like, yeah, I really enjoyed that. That was really fun. But then when it got to university, things just spiraled out of control. There were all these, like, symbols and numbers, and I didn't know what they meant. Um, and for me, it was just too hard. And that's when I decided to drop it and quit maths. And I think, for me, that was a really good decision. A lot of the time we think about, oh, don't be a quitter, just stick with it. But for me, I could have gone on with maths, tried really, really hard, but at the end of the day, I just didn't have it. And so I decided to focus my attention to chemistry, a subject I still really enjoyed, um, but I was ultimately better at and would kind of like find more satisfaction from that. And that decision paid off for me, because um, in the next year, I went on a semester exchange to Hong Kong. I think you're kind of seeing like a general travel theme that our students really like to not be here. Um, <laughs> and that's a good thing. You know, there's very few times where you get the opportunity to spend six months living in another country, experiencing another culture, meeting people from all around the world, and seeing phenomenal views like that. And I look back at my time in Hong Kong as some of the greatest times that I ever had. After my third year, um, I decided that I really, still, I really still did enjoy chemistry, and so I went on and enrolled myself in honours. So honours is a time uh, to do a little bit of research, and also to try and figure out, is research for me? Do I like this research life? And there was a lot of emotions that were going through my head throughout the year, and if you are doing any research, you'll probably, probably feel the same thing. There's disbelief when things never work out. There's anger when your experiments don't work. A lot of depression when you put so much energy into research and it doesn't work out. A lot of frustration. But there's also joy and happiness when suddenly you figure out something, a problem that you've been working on for six months, and you suddenly crack it. I decided that, yes, research was pretty good, so I decided to enroll in my PhD. And I sort of wish that when people told me um, to do a PhD that they kind of explain the whole commitment idea of it. And for me, a PhD is very much like a marriage. It's a commitment to one other person for X amount of time, uh, often a um, very strenuous relationship at times. Um, but yeah, it is a commitment. So for those of you that might be thinking about this in the future, just bear that in mind. But it does lead to a lot of opportunities as well. And so in two years ago, I got to go to a conference in Germany, um, again, traveling, seeing the world, learning all about other people. That brings me to today and the future, and what I want to perhaps do in the future. And for me, I absolutely have no idea what I'm doing. And I am not stressed about that idea. I think it's okay. Um, because if you see my track record, it's quite a non-linear pathway that I've taken. But it's all sort of worked out in the end. And I have kind of faith that with all the things that I've learned throughout my university degree, the fact that I have these degrees and have these opportunities, that in the future something will come up for me that will work with what I want to do. And that's what I want to end with. Thank you very much. Okay. We pretty well almost ran out of time, so we just ended just in time. What now? Well, what now is a big question for you, but in the immediate future, we're actually going to be running three tours leaving right now. So the people leading the tours, uh, Jason will be leading a physics tour, and we'll be leaving from the bottom and heading out those doors. Chemistry, Nobby will be leading the chemistry tour, and these are tours that will go outside of what you can normally see and have a look at some of the facilities focusing on physics, chemistry, and also earth sciences. Alan, who will be holding a sign, there's Alan there, 
Um, actually, if you guys lead from the top, so chemistry, geology, lead from the top. The last thing I'll leave you guys with is it's a quote that Jane Lomax Smith said when she was giving a graduation speech, pick a passion, not a profession. It's the skills that will give you a job. Thank you very much. <laughs>